All right, my camera is on. Everything looks great. What's it like to be you? What's it like to be me? Um, the first half of my life, I didn't know who I was, so I kind of hid all my mental health issues because it was easier than explaining it to people. Um, and within the past about five years, I've been getting more and more open with it. And yeah, now I try to explain to people more what my life is like, I guess, living inside my head. What's your favorite thing about your life? I think it is how interesting every day is. I still don't fully understand what she goes through and I have known her for 13 years. Welcome to SBSK. Join me as I travel around the world and interview individuals living with a condition to prove no matter how you communicate or what obstacles you face, you're always deserving of love and acceptance. So without hesitation, let's meet today's friend. When you tell somebody that you have OCD, how do you hope they react? I hope that they don't automatically say a stereotype like, oh, you're super clean then, you wash your hands a lot, um, you must be really organized. Um, I would hope that they would say, oh, tell me more about that, or what is OCD, even if they kind of know. I think that's what I would want someone to ask. How is OCD affecting you in this very moment? This very moment? Um, OCD basically affects every aspect of my life, so everything that I touch, so where my hands are, um, how things are placed around me. Basically, every step I take, I see something and my mind automatically talks out loud and says, go fix that or else you'll get sick. My wife has um, OCD and emetophobia. Um, her OCD consequence as I like to refer to it, um, is throwing up, which plays right into the emetophobia being the fear of vomiting. So um, sometimes when she's having a bad day, which would be her uh, obsession or whatever she's needing to fix that day um, happens, she, it snowballs very quickly. Metophobia is basically a phobia of vomit or vomiting. Um, a lot of people right away when they hear it just are like, what? That's odd. I don't understand. Um, or they just kind of cut it off, don't want to ask about it because they just think it's weird. Um, so basically, it's different from person to person. Me personally, with my emetophobia, it's in general getting sick is what my phobia is. What is it like to love somebody who's diagnosed with OCD? I don't think it's any different. Um, than loving someone who uh, doesn't have any certain diagnosis. I mean, your love for someone comes from your ability to, I guess, sway back and forth with that person, if you will. What's that mean? Um, I like to think of things in a relationship as a scale, right? So I help her with her OCD. Um, she helps me with uh, whatever I have to go through, you know. Um, it goes back and forth. The obsession part of OCD varies from person to person. Um, I've met some people whose obsession is something that sounds really irrational, like my parents are gonna die if I don't do this. Or something that, you know, the average person would be like, well, that doesn't make sense, that's not gonna happen because of you not moving something, you know. Um, so mine, with the vomiting, it's interesting that the emetophobia and the OCD are kind of intertwined because the obsession is the intrusive thought that comes into your head. So for me, it's, you're going to be sick, you're going to be sick. And then the compulsions is your mind saying, do this random thing, move this random thing, don't step there. And if you do that thing, it temporarily relieves the anxiety from your obsession. So if I do that, then my mind is like, okay, you're safe. You're not gonna get sick. But OCD is just a circle, so it's gonna go right back to another compulsion. Do this or you'll get sick. Is there ever a moment where you don't have intrusive thoughts? No. <laughs> so from the moment I wake up, it's automatic. Like the first thought usually in the morning is, how are you feeling? What's your stomach like? What are you gonna wear today? Where are you gonna step? Like, are you gonna brush your teeth before this? 
random things like that and it goes up until the point where I go to bed. So I would say when I'm having bad days, when I don't leave my bed, the only time that I don't have the thoughts is when I'm actually sleeping. Some days are so hard that I just lay in bed because then I know that I don't have to listen to my thoughts because I'm laying in one position. Um, I also require a lot of sleep. A lot of people think that I get a lot of sleep just because I don't know why, but I tend to need more sleep than the average person because it's exhausting to have a constant voice running through your head and I'm constantly, you know, tense trying to listen to my mind and relieve my anxiety. So it's very exhausting. <laughs> when you're having those days where you can't get out of bed, do you want your friends to call you up and say, come on, let's do this? Or do you just want empathy? Um, empathy and more understanding. I have had that happen in the past where I've canceled plans or not even canceled, just no-showed. You ghosted. I ghosted, yeah. And I feel bad because I know that I'm letting someone down, but at the same time, it's kind of my fault for not telling them the truth, you know? Instead of me saying, oh, I'm not, I'm not gonna come today, I could just say, I'm having a really bad day, my anxiety is really high, I'm not gonna. Why don't you say that? Well, now I will, but there was a time when I kind of kept that inside and I realized that, you know, well, it's who I am. So I would rather someone know the truth than just think I'm not someone that likes to leave my house or something. What's allowed you to be more open about it? Uh, my husband, Josh, has been super supportive with um, understanding who I am, asking questions. I've never had someone actually ask me questions about it. I really didn't know kind of what it was, but I could tell there was something different that I didn't understand. Um, I didn't really come to a full realization, and we really didn't come to a full realization of anything until two, three years ago, and that's when we really started, you know, digging down to, okay, what's going on? What's causing this? Um, what are these uh, different things that you're experiencing? He would see me, you know, struggle to do something that an average person would think is simple. Like I couldn't, I couldn't step over a certain spot. It was really hard for me to do. And he would see that and he would ask out loud, you know, like what's Why? going through your head <laughs> that's making you not do that. And it kind of went from there, just small questions. He'd see me struggle and ask, you know, what's going through your head right now? What's it saying? and we both kind of <laughs> learned about myself together. Uh, I think it was just really eye-opening. Um, I started to understand why she would get into bed a certain amount of times. And, you know, and it was just eye-opening to finally have a, oh, that's why she's doing this. He is really wanting to learn more about OCD and kind of what that's like to have the thoughts in your head. So we'll be just doing house chores or something and I'll say out loud what my head just said so that he can like imagine what it was like in that moment for him to have to do that action with that thought. It's always interesting. I, I'm, I'm constantly learning stuff. I'm a, I'm a pretty analytical person so I like to, not really like to, like I'll laugh and while she does things but I'll like to watch her, you know, say try and put a bowl in the sink or whatever and I try to figure out okay is it how she's touching it or is it how it's placed you know I try to figure those things out and then I'll ask her and then she'll explain no it's because of this you know and it, it's just it's always interesting to me. It helps me to talk out loud because I'll say something and I'll hear it out loud and I'll, I'll think you know like that just sounds crazy to me out loud but in my head it makes total sense and I'm like it and so being able to talk to someone out loud about it has helped so much. Um, he's almost like my, my own therapist all the time. Um, he also is really good at noticing when something's going wrong. He can tell if I'm having like constant thoughts and I can't focus or if I'm really struggling with something, he's able to come help me like um, relieve the situation. He's also really good at bringing humor into my life. So if I'm struggling, you know, he'll make a joke about it and say, I don't even know, like if, I, if I'm if i having trouble stepping into another room, he'll just like come by me and like do a stupid dance so it looks like me, you know? <laughs> so I think humor's helped a lot too. 
What would you say is the most important thing for others to understand about your wife? Um, I would say that she does have OCD and does have emetophobia and there are still people who don't think that that's a thing, I guess. Um, and that getting out of bed some days and just going enjoying the day isn't going to change uh, how her thoughts may be. I've had a lot of friends and acquaintances and coworkers um, say that they have, say, a diagnosis like anxiety um, and they don't use medication to cope with it, which is totally fine. A lot of people have their own coping mechanisms, but a lot of people try to push that onto other people who are on medication. Um, so they might say, you know, I can do it this way. You just have to go outside when the sun's out. The sun will make you feel better or, you know, uh, drink more water, or exercise. And it's, it's not that easy. I mean, it's something in your mind that just needs a little help. How does OCD and emetophobia affect you in a social situation such as this? Emetophobia is something that is always on my mind 24 hours a day. So in my mind, having people in our house um, sometimes is a scary thing. So I'm always worried, you know, what germs might someone have? Or what did that person eat? Or where has that person been? Um, and I consider my house a safe place. I like to have like my room as a quiet place. I know that I'm safe in my house. So social settings, um, it's a little more difficult because I'm thinking about all these possibilities. So for me to come here in your home and ask you questions, did you really have to work yourself up and have that courage to do this? <laughs> I was actually super excited about this. Um, obviously, yeah, there's gonna be still thoughts in my head like, oh, where has he been? I don't know if he doesn't feel good. All those thoughts will run. Healthy as an ox. <laughs> perfect. Lungs of steel. Great. I did my 10 push-ups this morning. Okay, perfect. No problem. Good to go. <laughs> what would you say is the biggest stigma about OCD and phobia? I think the biggest stigma is that people don't understand that there is a voice in your head that is constantly shaping your day, telling you what to do. Um, a lot of people might think that it's just do this, do that. And when in reality, it can be really debilitating for someone um, and it varies from person to person. You know, it's really interesting now that I've kind of educated myself a lot more on it um, because when I was growing up young, I always had a voice in my head telling me what to do. And I thought that it was something super weird. I thought maybe I was possessed or like something was super wrong with me. And when I learned it was an actual disorder, you know, it kind of relieved things. It seems like you're in a place where you've accepted it as part of your personality. Mm -hmm. Was there ever a time where you thought, this was something that's not me and I want to get rid of it? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Um, basically my whole life, <laughs> up until like three to five years ago when I really started understanding it, I always hoped that it would go away or it would lighten or medication would like wipe it completely. and. I finally came to the realization that, yeah, I'll always have it. Medication's gonna help calm my anxieties with it, but it's just something that I have to live with, so I might as well tell people about it. When you look Jess in the eye, what goes through your mind? Usually it's, what are you thinking? Or or like, a, what, what's next sort of thing, you know? Do her tendencies ever frustrate you? <laughs> Um, I will say sometimes, but a lot of the sometimes is when I have already had, I would say, a normal exhausting day. So coming home from work after a, a long double, you know, she may have had a rough day where uh, sometimes she can't put certain dishes in the sink or throw garbage away. So I am I am now used to coming home and just quick cleanup of things that she have may have left around. Um, but early on, of course, it was, why is there a banana peel uh, on the coffee table? Um, and now it's just, okay, this makes sense. You know, it in in all of it now is okay because I ask the questions, you know, of, you know, is, is there a reason this is here? Even though you might not see on the outside that someone 
is struggling, you never know. So just be kind to everyone you meet. You don't know what's going on through their head. Thanks for watching. If you appreciate what we're doing and want to see SBSK grow, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. This will help us reach even more people and make the world a better place. Thank you. When somebody's meeting you for the first time, like I am now, and wants to get to know you, wants to ask questions, mm -hmm. what can they do to make you feel as comfortable as possible? I think to make me personally feel more comfortable is when they're asking questions, don't feel like a question would come off as offensive because I feel like it would be almost more offensive to not ask questions. 